Hello, how are you all doing? Welcome in everybody. My name is Chris and Games Workshop very, very kindly sent me a copy of the Tyranny Codex to go through and review. Um, I like doing this. I usually do this on Twitch uh, on the Saturday of kind of pre-order day, but I thought I'd do it in a YouTube video as well for you so that it could be easily found. And we're going to go through all the army rules, uh, all six detachments. There are six detachments in the Codex along with all the enhancements. Um, the... Uh, stratagems and then have a look at a couple of the new data sheets like the amazing Norn Emissary model. Uh, I, I love that model. <laughs> the Norn Emissary is really really cool. So we're going to have a look at all the army rules uh, and all the detachments. So the army rules haven't changed however. They are, they still are Synapse and Shadow in the Warp. Synapse is um, if your Tyranid model is within six inches of a friendly Synapse model then it is considered into, in, to be within Synapse range and you take, can take a Battleshock test on 3d6 rather than 2d6, so you're not failing a Battleshock test, which is great. And then obviously you have the Shadow in the Warp as well, which is once per game, you can do a Battlefield-wide Battleshock test for the enemy, and uh, if they fail it, they fail it. And then you can do some funky things with some of the detachments as well, and forcing mortal wounds on them if they do fail those, which is quite cool. So... We'll have a quick flick through. We The first detachment we've got up is the Invasion Fleet. Now, this is the one that was already in the Index, so nothing really has changed on this. Uh, at the beginning of the battle round, you can pick one of three Hyper Adaptations. So the first one is Infantry and Swarm Units get sustained hits one, which is quite cool. Tyranid models that are attacking a monster or a vehicle suddenly gets lethal hits, which is cool. Uh, and then the third one is a tyranny model. If you're attacking a unit that has a character in it, then uh, crits uh, have the precision ability. So if you're rolling a lot of attacks and you get a six, then you can allocate that attack to a character, which is quite cool as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we've seen all this before. Nothing re has really changed in here. We've got alien cunning, uh, which is um, once you've deployed, you can redeploy three units and even put them in strategic reserve, perfectly adapted is tyranny model only. You can re-roll one wound, one hit and one damage roll, one advance roll, one charge roll, or one saving throw for the bearer, and then you can do that once per turn. Uh, synaptic linchpin, so that's a tyranny model only, and while a friendly tyranny unit is within nine inches, it's been considered within synapse range of your army, so that just gives you a larger synapse bubble. And then a five plus feel no pain, um, and if it has lost any wounds and it goes to a four plus feel no pain that's the adaptive biology so let's uh, flick through to the next one which is crusher stampede oh i really don't know what to think about this one crusher stampede this one has already been previewed on warhammer community uh, i think a few people have kind of said that it's not particularly strong and i kind of agree with it it's such a shame when these kind of detachment rules have a, um, they have a restriction to them which means that they are very rarely going to get to be used like if you, as soon as you start putting as soon as you start putting uh, restrictions and you must do this to get x it it just takes away a little bit of the fun you're never going to get to reuse a rule that says if your model is, is is within six inches of a board edge and is under half strength and has and has and has like the amount of times that you get to use that rule is just it's just getting less and less um and unfortunately for the crusher stampede the detachment rule for this one is you can add one to the hit roll if you're below starting strength and you can add one to the wound roll if you're below half strength and this is only a tyranid monster so the crusher stampede you're going to have a, an army of monsters so you're not going to have many models and then you only get to use the detachment rule if one of those models has lost a wound. And then you can use like the second half of the detachment rule if it's lost lots of wounds. And unfortunately, once a model like a monster has lost lots of wounds, it's also degenerating and it's getting minus one to hit as well. So that's counteracting the plus one to hit. So really, you're only getting plus one to wound on a model that's nearly dead. And as we all know in 40k at the moment, what's happening a lot is you're going to be drawing uh, your secondary objectives and a secondary objective card might be bring it down so you're going to look at the enemy army and say right i need to bring down that monster to get my secondary points so you never really 
leave monsters or targets or units, particularly with a few models gone. Like the model is either there or it's not. <laughs> it's, it's very, very rarely um, in this edition is, is something like just kind of chipped away a little bit. Um, there, there are a few exceptions. So uh, like you could see this with a Norn Emissary um, having plus one to hit and plus one to wound, but that's one model in the army. Anyway, it's it's a bit of a shame. Uh, I could probably you you could you could maybe <laughs> I'm clutching at straws here. You could maybe write a army list with like lots of carn effects, but again, like even then, they're not going to be like there's not going to be a carn effects on that's taken two wounds and therefore is then getting all of this anyway. Whatever. So crush a stampede. Uh, let's see what the enhancements and stratums are like. So. Ominous Presence is the first enhancement, so it's a Tyranid model only, and you add three to the bearer's objective control characteristic. Okay, um, so you can make a Turvigon objective control eight. Okay, a nice big monster sat in the middle of the middle of the uh, board on an objective. Could be quite cool. Um, so Enraged Reserves is a Tyranid monster model only. If the bearer is destroyed by a melee attack, if it has not fought this turn on a on a roll of a D on a roll of a three plus, you can fight on death. So an enhancement that <laughs> an enhancement that means you have to die. Okay, <laughs> see what we see what Crusher Stampede is uh, is doing. Crusher Stampede is paying for its sins of uh, of eighth edition. Uh, <laughs> Null nodules is the next one. So uh, Tyranid, mon uh, Tyranid monster model only, and once per battle in the psychic phase, you can get feel no, feel no pain five plus against psychic attacks. Um, okay, so you can get five uh, feel plus uh, feel no pain five plus, and then monstrous nemesis. This is a last enhancement, and it's a Tyranid monster only. Each time a bearer of this melee attack that targets a monster or vehicle, you can add one to wound. So it's a Tyranid monster only. Now, it has to be a character as well to take an enhancement, so you're looking at a Hive Tyrant or a Turbigon, I think. I think they're really the only two. Um, so a Turbigon is... Uh, so what's a Turbigon? Turbigon is strength 12, minus 3, d6, plus 1 damage. So it's wounding a Land Raider on a 3. It's wounding a Rhino on a 2. Uh, monsters and vehicles, anything that's below toughness 12, it's going to be wounding on a 2. That's quite cool. Um, D6 plus 1 damage. Hive Tyrant is only strength 9, so Hive Tyrant is then wounding a Rhino on a 3. Yeah, okay. That, that, that could be quite fun. Again, you're going to be putting it on one model. Um, a little bit of synergy there. It just adds a little bit of extra punch. I suppose. Right, Corrosive Viscera is one command point. This is the next, uh, this is the set of stratagems. They're all one command point. And uh, this is in your opponent's shooting phase or their fight phase. So it's just after a Tyranid's model, uh, monster model from your army with a deadly demise ability that cannot fly. Again, there's all these, all these limitations. So it has to be a Tyranid monster model. Uh, it has to have deadly demise, but it can't fly. So it can't be your uh, flying hive tyrant with wings, and you can't like throw it into the enemy unit. And uh, spoilers, rather than rolling for deadly demise, it auto explodes. So putting lots of limitations on that for one command point. Uh, rampaging monstrosities is in your fight phase, and again you pick a monster unit from your army that has not been selected to fight until the end of the fight and until the end of the phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can reroll the hit. Okay, so for one command point, I can re-roll the hit roll on a Tyranid monster unit. But if that Tyranid monster unit has already taken some wounds, then they're getting plus one to hit. So we could be hitting on possibly twos, re-rolling ones, or we could use, uh, we could ignore the detachment rule and just re-roll everything hitting on threes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Savage Raw. Anyway, I mean, there's, there's only so many kind of um, re-rolls or plus one or uh, sustained hits. So there's only so many kind of rules that you can throw out anyway. But it just seems a bit of a... This one's... I, I'm not entirely sure this one quite knows what it wants to be. This detachment. Um, the others in, in the book, brilliant. 
Uh, fight phase. Uh, just after an enemy unit has selected its target, this is Savage Raw, one Tyranid monster unit from your army that was selected as the target of one of the attacks. The enemy unit must take a battle shot test. Until the end of the phase, they are minus one to hit. And if they failed it, they're minus one to wound as well. So if, they, if they're fighting a unit of Carnifexes and they fail their battle shot test, they're not only minus one to hit, they're also minus one to wound. Um, that could be quite cool. That's quite funky. Again, it has to be a Tyranid monster unit as well. So you're going to be throwing in... I think, I think this kind of army, you're going to be throwing selective monster units in just to do little bits of mission play, little bits of primary denial and things. Uh, rather than just going all in. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, <laughs> Untrammeled Ferocity is the next uh, uh, the next stratagem. Again, it's one command point. You use it in your movement phase. One Tyranid monster unit from your army that has not been selected to move until the end of the phase, models in that unit can move through enemy models as if they were friendly and until the end of the phase, any desperate escape tests are automatically passed. Now this is brilliant. This is really, really cool. So if you're getting surrounded, uh, you've got a, a big unit of Carnifexes or a Horus Spex or something, uh, and the enemy has uh, just encircled it with uh, <laughs> with neophytes. They've got like a nice little neophyte circle all the way around you to try and hold you. Um, you can do one command point and you can just move straight over the top of them and go and get that objective that you need. That's quite cool. I like that. Um, it would be even cooler is if the, when you move over that enemy unit, maybe they take D3 mortal wounds as well. I think that'd be hilarious. Um, but uh, yeah, that's really, really cool. I like that. It really puts down, particularly uh, for a army which might be very monster heavy, therefore model light. So maybe you'd only have like 10, 9 or 10 models in the army. Um, move blocking them and, and stopping those models getting to objectives um, is, is going to be quite powerful. So this just completely takes that out. So I like this stratagem. That it's brilliant uh, in terms of how this army uh, likes to play. Um, having that stratagem in there is absolutely brilliant. I like it. Swarm Guided Salvos is the next one though. So this is in your shooting phase and you pick a monster from your army and until the end of the phase, ranged weapons ignore cover and ballistic, uh, and you can ignore any or all modifiers to the ballistic steel characteristic and any modifiers to the hit roll. So they're always going to be hitting on the on the characteristic uh, of the weapon, which is really really cool. And they're ignoring cover. So Tyranid monster unit that has got lots of shooting attacks. Um, Hive tyrant with death sp uh, death death spitter. Um, There'll be there'll be some some crackers in there for one command point. You can get lots and lots uh, of uh, effective shots down uh, down range with that. And the final strat in Crusher Stampede is massive impact. When uh, so you do this in your charge phase after a monster model has charged, and guess what? Roll six dice on a four plus, take a mortal wound. Uh, brilliant, really really cool. Uh, get in there, chip away a, a few. Of the um, of the tricky tough uh, models, uh, throw that into some custodies and just chip away a, a few mortal wounds before you uh, go in with the horror specs and just like bam, smack them as well. So uh, that's that's the Crusher Stampede. I, I like I said at the beginning, I think this one's just a little bit lost in what it wanted to be. I think they kind of had. A nice idea. I think the execution on this one is just just a little bit subpar. Uh, they've got some nice, um, some nice little stratagems in there, uh, like like the untrampled uh, untrampled ferocity, where you can uh, move over uh, the enemy units. I think that's a really really clever one for this kind of style of army. I think that's great. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think you're going to be using this one very much. Um, let me know down below uh, if you do, and if you have any ideas on how to run it. Because I'm quite curious, because I like the idea of having like loads of Tyranid monsters. I think they're fantastic, particularly with the Norn emissary model um, and uh, like loads of Hive Tyrants, Carnifexes, Dream Killers. Brilliant. Could be really, really cool. Just a shame that the rules I don't think quite land. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so the next detachment, Unending Swarm. So the detachment rule on this one, this is this tends to be linked to. 
Now you'll see this word, this keyword kind of pop up a lot in this in this detachment. This is the unending multitudes or the endless multitude units. Now endless multitude units are neurogaunts, termagants, gargoyles, and hormigants. So there's only four. Um, but uh, those three, uh, those four, <laughs> just said four, uh, those four units are going to become really, really useful within this uh, detachment. So the detachment rule is insurmountable odds. And each time an enemy unit, I've got to read this one very, very carefully, each time an enemy unit is selected to shoot, after that unit has finished making its attacks, if one or more models from one or more endless multitude units from your army were destroyed as a result of those attacks, each unit can make a surge move. So if they're split firing and they're shooting a unit of Hormigants and a unit of Termigants, both can both can surge. Uh, and the surge move is to do so, roll 1d6, that unit can be moved a distance in inches up to that result. However, they have to end up closer uh, to the closest enemy unit, uh, excluding aircraft. And uh, when doing so, you can also end up with an engagement range, which is cool. Uh, you can't make an endless. Uh, you can't make a surge unit if you are battle shot, though. You can't make make a surge move if you are battle shot. So that's quite cool. It's uh, a little bit like the World Eaters uh, one, where you shoot the berserkers and the berserkers are still charging at you, sort of thing. Um, it's uh, it's quite funky. The you're going to be ob it's, it's it's obvious what's going to happen here. You're going to have lots and lots of hormigants, lots and lots of termigants, uh, some neurogaunts to kind of move and maybe uh, um, create some uh, blockage uh, for charges and things. That's quite cool. This, along with the termigants being able to move as well, uh, is 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 going to make some rather fast. Um, armies, uh, particularly with the Hormigants as well, because the Hormigants can, of course, advance and charge. So let's have a look at some of the enhancements. Relentless Hunger is the first one. So it's a Tyranid model only, and you can add two to the move characteristic of the model in uh, of models in the bearer's units. So put this on a Winged Tyrant Prime, put it in some Gargoyles, you suddenly get a really, really fast Gargoyle unit, etc, etc. Quite cool. I'm sure there'll be a really, really nice little synergy there where you can make some really fast units. Uh, naturalized Camouflage, however, is a Tyranid model only. At the start of the first battle round, you can select three Endless Multitude units that are within nine inches of the bearer, and they all get cover for the first round. Um, interesting. Um, I don't think it's going to be used very much. I think cover is pretty, pretty prevalent in the uh, current edition. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. I don't know whether it doesn't say you have the benefit of cover against that attack. So I'm guessing if a unit ignores cover, then this isn't going to force the benefit of cover over it. Um, so it's uh, yeah, maybe if it's ten points, uh, then um, then it could be quite cool. Piercing talons. So tinted model only. Each time a model in the bearer's unit can make an attack on a crypt. Uh, on a critical wound, you can increase the AP of that attack by one. So, Tyranid model only. Um, Broodlord would be quite cool with this one. Um, you can have a slightly more armor penetration. Again, the, the, the Hive Tyrant. I keep going back to the Hive Tyrant. I really like the Hive Tyrant. And I've still got this idea um, of a Hive Tyrant that's kind of a Lictor genome with the kind of the Lictor arms on there. So uh, this with the armor penetration, uh, inc improved armor penetration would be quite cool. So that's Piercing Talons. And then the final enhancement uh, for an Ending Swarm is Adrenalized Onslaught. So this is a Tyranid model only. Each time the bearer unit piles in, you can move an additional three inches. So now you've got a six inch pile in and a six inch consolidate. Now that's really interesting for the consolidate because of course you can only consolidate if it will get you onto an objective or into uh, combat with a uh, another enemy unit. So giving yourself that extra pile in is gonna be really, really cool. And it is the bearer's unit as well. So you can put this on a model. So you can put this on a hive tyrant and put it in some tyrant guard. Or you can put it on um, a, uh, a tyrant prime and put him with some uh, tyranid warriors. That would be quite cool. Um, let's have a look at some of the stratagems. So these are, uh, there are five of them that are one command point. There's one that's two command points, which is unending waves. So you can do this in any phase. 
and you pick one endless multitude unit from your army that was just destroyed. So that's a unit of gargoyles, unit of hormigants, unit of termigants, and a unit of neurogorns. So one of those four units that was just destroyed. You can add a new unit to your army identical to that unit. So you can bring that unit straight back. Uh, however, any characters in that unit were not just were, were are not return, returned. So you don't get the tyrant prime back with the gargoyles if you bring gargoyles back. Uh, so that's two command points though. You're going to be using that on like a large unit of hormigants or a large unit of termigants, I'm sure, to make full use of it. So the next one, synaptic goading, is the next stratagem, and you can use this in any phase just before an endless multitude unit. Uh, that is within synapse range makes a surge move so um, this rather than uh, sorry yes uh, so when you roll the d6 to determine how far it goes um, instead oh, hang on <laughs> when making the surge move you can re-roll the d6 there we go so you can re-roll for some reason i thought it was auto surge six inches but it's not uh, you can re-roll the d6 to determine how far the, that would have been so much easier effect when making the surge rolls surge roll is automatically six inches no you can re-roll it uh, and that move uh, and you can end that as close as possible to the closest objective marker instead of as close to the enemy uh, enemy unit so you can go in a different direction if you want to for one command point so if you're shooting at uh, some hormigants you can go and try and steal a sneaky objective if you want to uh right let's have a look at the next one which is teaming masses uh, this is your opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase and you can pick an endless multitude unit again so you can see all of these are locked to that kind of keyword and um, until the end of the phase, each time you, uh, each time an enemy targets that unit, you can subtract one from the hit roll, which is really, really cool. So minus one to hit for uh, an endless multitude unit. I do like how they have done these attachments. They're all kind of, they're all available to the entire Tyranid army, but then there are certain characteristics and bonuses which are locked to keywords, like the endless multitude. So you can take whatever you like in the army, however the endless multitudes, it really just kind of pushes them up to the next level, um, apart from maybe crush a stampede with the monsters. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so the next one is swarming masses, and this is in your shooting phase or the fight phase. And uh, you pick one endless multitude unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight. Until the end of the phase, you get sustained hits one. However, if the unit is 15 or more models, you also get five plus crits. So five plus you're getting sustained hits one, which is quite cool. So if you give that, I think it's the flesh borer on the termigants. So if you have a unit of 20 termigants shooting 40 shots with the flesh borer, uh, you're getting crits on a five plus for an extra hit as well uh, they're only strength four with no ap but at least you're getting an awful lot you're like you're going to be throwing a absolute ton of dice at things for that so that would be quite cool and uh, so bounding advance is the next one so this is in your movement phase and you pick an endless multitude unit from your army and whenever they advance they are automa automatically advancing six so you don't have to roll that one this is great for hormigants i don't think that has to be even remotely uh, said uh, hormigants advancing and charging is brilliant auto advancing six inches and then charging is even better so yeah perfect one command point hormigants uh, 14 inch straight off move 14 inch move 12 inch charge yes gross and the final one for uh, the endless multitude stratagems is preservation imperative it is imperative that we preserve these turnits. Uh, so <laughs> uh, this is in your opponent's shooting phase just after it has selected its targets. One endless multitude unit from your army that was selected and until the end of the phase, your unit is treated as containing fewer than five models for the purpose of blast. I think this is brilliant. I think this is really, really cool. And it's the first time this sort of stratagem has kind of popped up. I know we've, I know we have. This is the first codex as well, but, but obviously we've got lots of stratagems in lots of uh, indexes already. This is the first one that's kind of come out and had a bit of a counter to the blast keyword, and I like that. The, um, I, I think ultimately, I think at the moment the addition is, I want to kill that unit. 
Um, I'm going to pick some of my units and they're basically going to hit on twos with re-rolls and they're going to wound on gross amounts with re-rolls with lots of armor penetration. We're just going to delete that unit. Um, so this kind of anti-keyword stratagem I think is really, really cool. So uh, yeah, if you're shooting at a unit of 20 Hormigants, all of a sudden that blast uh, that blast weapon isn't getting plus three or plus four um, to the to the blast shot. So I think that's really really good. So that is that is uh, that detachment down. There's an ending swarm. Let's have a look at the next one. So the next detachment that we need to talk about is the assimilation swarm. And I was saying how all of these attachments are quite cle they're, they're quite cleverly kind of locked to a keyword not particularly locked but like they they bonus they give bonuses to a keyword uh, within the within the codex uh, so this one is locked to uh, the harvester keyword now models with the harvester keyword are a pyrocure a horospex a psychophage and the ripper swarm so there's only four of them um, but these ones uh, get the benefit of these rules here. So in your command phase, each harvester unit from your army that is within range of an objective marker you control can regenerate one friendly tyranid unit that is within six inches. So if you've got a horror spec sitting on an objective surrounded by termagants, then you can regenerate those termagants uh, within six inches of the uh, of the uh, horror specs. A unit can only be regenerated once per phase. There are ways of doing two, um, and we will get to that. It is an enhancement. And uh, you can do one of the following. So one model in the unit regains up to D3, uh, D3 wounds, or one destroyed infantry model, excluding characters, is re returned to the unit with four wounds remaining. Um, if it is an endless multitude unit, you can put three models back instead. So remember, the endless multitude units are the termagants, neurogaunts, hormigants, and gargoyles. So if you've got a unit of Hormigants next to a Horospex or a Psychophage, then um, at the uh, beginning of your command phase, then you can put three models back into that unit. Now the enhancements kind of lean in a little bit to that. Regenerating Monstrosity is a Tyranid model only. Um, but However, you can't put this on a monster, which is, which is okay. Uh, that's fine. Um, the bearer's unit can only be regenerated up to so the bearer's unit can be regenerated up to twice per phase instead of once. You can't put you can't put a model in any of the endless multitude units apart from a gargoyle which can have a winged tyrant prime. I think that's the only one he can go in. Let's just go and have a quick check. I think the Winged Tyrant Prime can only go in the Gargoyles. Yeah, you can go in Gargoyles, Tyranid Warriors, and Tyranid Warriors. So you're only going to get a double regen of plenty of models, if you like, um, if you take got if you take the Winged Tyrant Prime and then the Gargoyles, and then they're next to a Horospex or a Psychophage or a Pyrocore or something, uh, so that they do get the benefit of that regen. Uh, other than that, then it's going to be a brood lord with gene stealers, and then they're just going to get one model back. Um, okay, cool. Um, and you'll get that model back twice. Might be quite cool. Instinctive defense is the next one, though. Uh, so turn in model only again. Uh, while the bearer, while the bearer is within six inches of one or more friendly harvester units. Remember, those harvester units are the pyrocure, pyro, pyro cure, the horospex, the psychophage, and the ripper swarms. Uh, Ripper Swarms uh, would be quite cool just to have masses of those all over the place so that they're kind of constantly healing little bits here and there. Uh, while the bearer is within six inches of one or more friendly harvester units, you can target the bearer's unit with a heroic intervention strat for zero command points. In addition, while the bearer is within six, in inch six inches of one or more friendly harvester units, they also get fright first. Now this isn't locked to monster only so you can put this on something a little bit more scary so you could give this you could, you could give this to a uh, a hive tyrant with um hive guard and then that hive guard unit can heroically intervene as long as they are within six inches of uh, a ripper swarm then they're always going to get fights first that's quite funky uh, i'm sure there are some more uh, combinations that you can do as well uh, i just haven't found them 
But uh, if you do find something funky with that one, then let me know in the comments down below. Biophagic Flow, which is an aura, is the next one. So it's a Tyranid model only. Again, it's not locked to, uh, 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 not locked to, hasn't, to, uh, it's not locked to not being a monster or anything like that. While a friendly harvester model is within 12 inches of this, when using the Feed the Swarm ability, which is the regen, the harvester model can regenerate at one friendly Tyranid unit within nine inches instead of one within six. So as long as this model is within 12 inches uh, of a harvester unit, then that harvester has a, a, a wider aura for its uh, regen ability. So that's quite cool when you stick that right in the middle of your army, surround it with harvester units. Um, obviously, the, I think the most effective harvester unit on this one is pretty obvious. It's going to be the Ripper Swarms. You're going to have the Ripper Swarms absolutely everywhere. Just giving regen to units hit left, right and centre. Parasitic Biomorphology is the final enhancement in this one. It's a Tyranid model only and you can add one to the strength characteristic of melee weapons equipped by models in the bearer's unit. The first time the bearer's unit is destroys an enemy unit in the fight phase while it's within six inches of one or more friendly harvester units till the end of the battle add one to the attacks characteristics equipped by the models in the bearer unit uh, so that's the first time it's not every time so you can only add plus one uh, to uh, the attacks but they do already get plus one to the strength uh, and again it's going to be within six inches of a harvester unit so if you're going to take this assimilation swarm you're just going to want ripper swarms coming out of your ears you just want them absolutely everywhere covering the battlefield right let's have a look at the stratagems they are all one command point uh, oh no that's a lie there's one that is two command points so we'll do the one that's two command points it's called ablative carapace uh, you pick this in your opponent's shooting phase and you pick one harvester unit from your army that was selected as the target of one of the uh, enemy attacks and they get five plus feel no pain uh, and if they're on an objective marker they get a four plus feel no pain so you're going to be sitting there um, this is uh, you've got to pick your harvester unit though so this isn't going to be one of the units which you are healing all the time it's just trying to keep your horror specs or something uh, alive on an objective marker so a horror specs on an objective marker with a four plus feel no pain is going to be a little bit a little bit tougher to shift um, Ripper swarms on an objective marker with a four plus feel no pain, not so much. <laughs> so, brood guard impulse is the next one, and this is in any phase you like. And you pick a harvester unit, and uh, until the end of the battle, each time a friendly Tyranid model makes an attack that targets the enemy unit that destroyed the harvester unit you picked, you can add one to the wound roll. So, if your uh, desolation squad kill. Uh, a ripper swarm unit then you can go click one command point add plus one, uh, one plus one to wound against the desolation marines that's quite cool um so the the uh, that that's kind of one of those stratagems that you tell your opponent about at the beginning of the game so that they're kind of a little bit scared about using their best unit to uh pick off and kill or take the kill shot uh, on some of your other units you they they it's quite cool, quite a cool little stratagem just to kind of get into the, into the mind of your enemy, which is obviously <laughs> what is really cool about mids. Uh, so reclaim biomass. You know, you go, again, you can do this in any phase, and it's when a Tyranid unit from your army is destroyed. One harvester unit from your army that is within six inches of that destroyed unit can regenerate a friendly Tyranid unit within six inches of your harvester unit. So if you've lost a... Uh, if you've lost a unit of Neurogaunts or a Ripper Swarm next to a Horospex, then the Horospex can then regenerate uh, some Gene Stealers next to it, for instance. That would be quite cool. Um, I don't know quite how much kind of split fire is going to be going on when you're playing, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good little stratagem to have in your, in your back pocket. So uh, Tyranniformed is used in your command phase. Again, it's one command point and you pick a harvester unit from your army that is within range of an objective marker you control. That objective marker re remains under your control, so you get sticky objectives for one command point. Absolutely brilliant. Sticky objectives are great. Really, really good. Uh, particularly when you want to have Ripper Swarms that kind of pushing forward and uh, holding um, spaces uh, in your front line as well to try and give uh, uh, all the units within six inches of that little harvester 
bubble if you like so you want them kind of pushing forward rather than staying back and sitting on your back objective so that's really really cool uh, secure biomass so we've had the reclaim biomass now we're looking at securing it and this is done in the fight phase for one command point and you're picking a tyranid unit from your army and until the end of the phase melee weapons in uh, that, that models in the unit have have lethal hits so if it's a harvester unit as well it's going to be critting on a five plus so they're getting lethal hits on a five plus for one command point. Now, if you do this on a horror specs, horror specs obviously has four attacks at minus one damage two, and then another four attacks at minus two damage d six plus one. That's going off with lethal lethal hits critting on a five. That's an awful lot of hits, uh, an awful lot of wounds. So you're rolling fourteen attacks uh, for the damage two. That's going to be uh, that's going to be trumping through a little bit. Um, I'm sure there's another one that you could use the psychophage. I don't know what the psychophage or stat line is, but um, yeah, it could be uh, it could be quite funky on that one uh, with the with the lethal hits kind of getting those wounds going straight through. Rapacious hunter hunger is in your fight phase. Uh, so the secure biomass is in any fight phase you can do that in the opponent's fight phase as well which is quite funky so if they're charging something and you think it's going to survive then you can hit back really really uh, really really hard as well so uh, rapacious hunger however is just in your fight phase however you pick a tyranid unit from your army that was just destroyed an enemy unit and that unit immediately regenerates and uh, if your unit is also a harvester unit you can choose for one model to regain up to D3 lost wounds, uh, and that model regains up to three lost wounds instead. So rather than rolling the D3, uh, you get three wounds back. So if you are, if your Horospex is going in, uh, <laughs> if your Horospex is going in, uh, dropping secure biomass for all those lethal hit crits on a five plus, it kills the unit. It's then going to get the wounds back as well, uh, which is great. Right, the next one, and my favourite one, this is the one I really want to kind of have a play around with. I'll, I'll write some some, um, uh, some army lists around this. I really want to kind of dig into the, the synergies on this one as well. So once I get my hands on the actual codex and I can flick through it rather than scrolling on a PDF, uh, I'm going to be dead excited to kind of flick backwards and forwards and find everything on that one. And this is the Vanguard Onslaught detachment now this one is lictors death leaper uh, all the cool scary stuff von ryan leapers everywhere hormigants charging through um, and is the vanguard onslaught so the detachment rule tyranid units so not the vanguard invader tyranid units with this ability are eligible to charge in a unit in, in, in a turn in which they fell back so your entire army is fall back and charge if you have the Vanguard Invader keyword, you can not only fall back and charge, but you can also advance and charge, which is great. Um, and that's quite it's quite a it's quite a nice little rule that because I really want to take Hormigants in my Vanguard Invaders um, army as well, and um, Hormigants already innately advance and charge, so Hormigants will be advancing, charging, fall backing and charging, and uh, yeah, everything. So yeah, so. The entire army fall back and charge. Vanguard invader, invader units fall back, charge, and advance and charge. Great. Now, the one extra little rule that this one has as well, uh, Death Leaper loses the Hunter Organism rule and can be your Warlord. Now, the Hunter Organism rule just says cannot be your Warlord. So Death Leaper can be your Warlord in this Vanguard Onslaught detachment. Enhancements. Hunting Grounds. Tyranid models... Um, Tyranid model only. Oh, let's go quickly go through the Vanguard Invader units. Now, you do get loads of them. So, Vanguard Invader units, you have the Winged Hive Tyrant, the Winged Tyranid Prime, the Neuro Lictor, the Brood Lord, the Parasite and Mortrex, Gargoyles, Death Leaper, the Harpy, the Hive Crone, the Lictor, the Tyrannocyte, and the Von Ryan Leapers. So, you get tons and tons of... Um, vanguard invader units to kind of play around with and synergize and and combine uh, things with which is quite cool i think the wing Ty tyranid prime might be quite interesting in this one he can go in with um some gargoyles you can uh, stick him in some um uh, tyranid warriors as well 
uh, and play around with those. Um, I don't know if you've seen my... Where is he? don't know whether you've seen my um, Tyranny Prime uh, video, um, but the Wing Tyrant Prime has been converted up so that he's got to kind of lick to arms as well. So he's quite cool. I'm dead excited to see. Anyway, let's get into this one because <laughs> I'm starting to waffle now. I've got ideas going through my head. Right, so enhancements, hunting grounds. So this is a Tyranid model only. It doesn't have to be a Vanguard Invader. You can put it on anybody you like. So you can put this on a Hive Tyrant or whatever you like. While this bearer is set up on the battlefield, each time your opponent sets up a reserve unit on the battlefield, roll a D6. On a 2+, plus, you have to take a Battleshot test. That's really cool. Stops you bringing something down and then dropping a stratagem on them straight away. Why, why you have to roll a dice? Just make it automatic. At this point where you have to roll a 2 plus just make it automatic when they put a reserve in there just make them take a battleship test uh, i suppose the roll of a one is still like ah oh! but anyway yes um so chameleonic is the next one so this is vanguard invader model only uh, so you've got those nice big long list you can put this on a winged tyrant uh, winged uh hive tyrant which is really cool so the bearer has stealth and each time a ranged attack targets the bearer's unit, models in that unit have the benefit of cover. So if you put this on a winged uh, Tyranid Prime and then stick it in some gargoyles, so the gargoyles suddenly have stealth and they get cover all the time, that's quite funky. I'm still tempted to put this on a uh, winged Hive Tyrant uh, and just have him as chameleonic. I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, the next enhancement we've got the stalker so vanguard again a vanguard invader model only at the start of the battle select one enemy unit each time the bearer makes an attack that targets that enemy unit add one to hit and add one to wound that's cool stick that on a uh, again stick that on a on a hive tyrant add one to hit add one to wound so it's always hitting on twos and probably always wounding on twos that could be quite funky um, other models that you could probably put that on, you could put that on a Broodlord, um, and you unfortunately you can't put that on Death Leaper because Death Leaper is an epic hero. Uh, in terms of anything else, you could put that on the Parasite, I think. I'm not sure how how successful that would be, but it could be quite funky, right? Last one, the last one, and. Um, this is a cracker. Uh, it is 30 points. Um, the Chameleonic is only 15 points. So if you want to put that on a Hive Tyrant, it's only 15 points. So this is 30 points. So this is a Neuro node. You can put this on any Tyranid character you like, not locked to anything. After both players have deployed, you can redeploy three Vanguard Invader units. And you can put them in Strategic Reserves. So you can pull those nice big unit of six Von Ryan Leapers. You can throw those into uh, into reserve. Uh, you can redeploy some other stuff. You can redeploy uh, some gargoyles. You're not going to be redeploying that bigger units, but you can redeploy some um, some units that have a little bit more uh, strategic play in them. Uh, I think of redeploying a Hive Tyrant with wings would be quite cool. Um, I mean, he's he's quite fast anyway. But redeploying him and putting him on the other side of the battlefield, kind of lulling uh, lulling people uh, into a no deploy onto one side, would be quite funky. Anyway, yeah, perfect. Really, really like it. Lots of little uh, nuances onto uh, in here that I think we can play with. Now, the stratagems again. There's one that's two command points. Everybody, else, everything else is one command point. Surprise assault is the first one. So this is in your shooting phase or the fight phase. You pick one Vanguard Invader unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight, and uh, and then you pick an enemy unit as well. It doesn't say, doesn't say which enemy unit you have to pick. So you could pick another enemy unit that is not fighting uh, that your Vanguard Invader is not fighting. So if you wanted to charge like a tank with your Death Leaper. Uh, and you think you know you're going to kill the tank, but you can pick another unit that's nearby. It doesn't even have any range to it. You can just pick another enemy unit. That enemy unit must take a battleshot test. Until the end of the phase, each model, each time a model in your unit makes an attack against that target uh, that targets the enemy unit, add one to the hit. And if the battleshot has failed, you can add one to the wound. So add one to hit, add one to wound uh, against an enemy unit, which is quite funky. 
Uh, that's one command point. So another one command point. Uh, this also is in the fight phase. You pick in a Vanguard Invader Infantry unit. So that's going to be pretty much everything apart from a Winged Hive Tyrant, uh, a Harpy, Hive Crone, and a Tyrannocyte. So everything else. So Broodlord, Parasite, uh, Gargoyles, Death Leaper, all of that sort of stuff. Till the end of the phase, melee weapons have precision. Straight in there. Uh, which one would you throw that on? Probably. Oh. It would be quite cool to put that. Like I keep wanting to put. I'm going to have to convert some Tyranid Warriors that look like Lictors so that I can have a Winged ty ty uh, wing Tyrant Prime in with some Tyranid Warriors because there's loads of little things like Tyranid Warriors with precision would be quite cool. Anyway. Uh, Cedar Brood is the next one. This is uh, one command point that's in your movement phase until the end of the phase for the purposes of setting up those selected units on the battlefield. Treat the current battle round as being high, one higher than it actually is. So when you're deploying Vanguard Invader units from reserve uh, in battle round one, treat it as battle round two. Um, if you're deploying it in battle round two, then you can treat it as battle round three. So it just gives you more... Uh, ability to drop in which would be quite cool hyposensory cilia however is two command points now there's lots on this one so when you're uh, so then you do this in your opponent's movement phase just after an enemy unit ends a normal advance or fallback move and what you can do is you can pick up two vanguard invader units that are within nine inches of that unit so it's after they've moved made a normal move, advance or fallback. Uh, so it's not just before, it's not as they're moving, it's after they've moved. So this is one of those things that you, that you are going to have to be saying, if you finish within nine inches of that unit, I'm going to be able to do this. So it's for two command points, it's almost controlling where your enemy is moving rather than reacting to it. I, I don't think you're going to be using this very often, but you are going to be saying a lot of times to your enemy, if you finish within nine inches of that model, these two models are going to be able to move because the effect is select two two units and they can both move six inches. Um, it can't be an engagement range. So yeah, it's almost like mini phantasm, if you like. Uh, so rather than just picking a unit and moving it, you have to be within nine inches and then they can move six inches. Um, so yeah, very, very cool if you're wanting to... Um, push your units forward, get those stealth units, the infiltrate units up in the battle, up in the board, um, stopping your enemy moving forward, holding a little bit of board control. When they get close, you can then move back uh, and take them out of threat range, which is quite cool. Um, obviously, nine inches away and then moving six inches, then you're putting, them, putting yourself out of charge range. Uh, Unseen Lurkers is the next one, so one command point. Your opponent's shooting phase just after an enemy unit has selected its targets. You can pick an Vanguard Invader unit from your army that was selected as a target, and until the end of the phase, your unit cannot be selected as a target unless they're within six inch, unless they're within twelve inches. If the unit has a lone operative ability, if the attacking model is within six inches, your opponent can select new targets for the attacking unit's attacks. So you basically get stealth for one command point, uh, and it improves lone operative to six inches. Uh, which is insane. So for one command point, your Death Leaper can just sit there quite happily. Um, yeah, cool. Invisible Hunter is the last one. This is also one command point. This is at the end of your opponent's fight phase. And you can pick two Vanguard Infantry units and bounce them back into stra into res uh, strategic reserves. They're not allowed to be in, um, uh, in combat. Uh, so as long as they're outside three inches... Uh, at the end of your opponent's turn, you can just throw them back up into Deep Strike, which is great because then they can come back down and play your secondary game for you in the next turn. This is brilliant. Um, units like Mandrakes, uh, Calidus Assassin, everybody's got those in their armies. At the moment, I take Ophidian Destroyers and my Necrons for the same ability. They can just bounce back up into Strategic Reserve for uh, mission play so if one command point to be able to do this with two vanguard invader units is brilliant uh, so one lictor will be coming up pretty much every single turn with this um, mainly because of the base size and he'll be able to drop that down and uh, and help out uh, with secondary stuff so that's the vanguard invader the vanguard onslaught detachment i like this one 
like I say, I really want to kind of get the codex in my hand so I can flick backwards and forwards and just kind of go through and say, right, okay, so the Broodlord can take this, uh, the Winged Hive Tyrant can take this, uh, the Winged Tyrant Prime can take it, but if he goes in some Tyranid Warriors, then what are they going to get from it, etc., etc. I just want to see all the little synergies with this. Uh, if you have any ideas for Vanguard Onslaught uh, armies, please let me know. I've got some crazy, crazy cool conversions going on. Uh, which is just basically just making an entire Tyranid army look like Lictus. It's great. I, I, li I like it a lot. Right, let's have a look at the next one. So the last one, the last attachment uh, in this codex is the Synaptic Nexus. This is all going to be like, just like throwing mind bullets everywhere. At least that's what I thought. Um, it, it kind of is and it kind of, uh, see what you think anyway. So the, the detachment rule for this one is at the start of the battle round, you can select one of the synaptic imperatives shown below and until the end of the battle round, um, while a Tyranid unit is within synapse range, you get this benefit. So you're going to have synapse creatures all over the battlefield giving giving um, all the other units these these benefits and you can pick one of these. So while you're within, uh, while you're within synapse range, you can have a 5-up invern. The next one is while it is within synapse range, you can add plus, uh, you can add one to advance and charge rolls, and uh, you also get gold goaded for slaughter. So while this unit is within synapse range, each time a model in the unit is, makes a melee attack, you can add one to the hit roll. So you either get a five up invun, uh, plus one advance and charge, or plus one to hit. So you pick one of those. That's kind of cool. That's all right. At least, like I say, th this is kind of what the crusher stampede should have been like crusher stampede should have been if you're within range of another monster like add plus one to hit like should have been something slightly better uh, but this this is quite cool so you're getting plus one to hit on this one just automatically you don't have to be half health <laughs> nothing like that boom there you go have plus one to hit uh so <laughs> i just i'm sorry i just think crusher stampede has just missed just missed the uh missed the 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 boat a little bit i don't know right anyway power of the hive mind so tyranid psyker model only so the psychers in the tyranid codex are zoanthropes turbigons maliceptors tyranid warriors the swarm lord the norn assimilator and the emissary neuro tyrant the winged tyrant prime uh, and both of the hive tyrants so they're all the tyranid psychers um and uh, so, yeah, so this is the first enhancement, which is the power of the hive mind. Tune is psycho model only. Improve the strength and AP of the psychic weapons uh, by one. So this is only going to be going on characters. You could possibly give this to the Neuro Tyrant. The Neuro Tyrant has the Flamer, of course, which is great for Overwatch. So if you give this to the Neuro Tyrant, that Flamer, which is already ignoring cover, suddenly becomes 2d6 shots at strength 6, minus 2, damage 2. So, uh, and ignoring cover as well, that's just killing Space Marines uh, left, right, and center. So, that's quite an interesting one. Uh, the next one is Psychostatic Disruption. So, this is again, it's a synapse model only. Enemy units that arrive on the battlefield from reserves cannot set up within 12 inches of the bearer. But wait, there's more! Uh, in addition, <laughs> once per battle. <laughs> During the first or second battle round, when your opponent declares that the unit will arrive on the battlefield from strategic reserve, the bearer can use this enhancement. So you only do it once. In uh, If it does, roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, they don't come down onto the battlefield. This is Gene Stealer Cult Central. This is just like anti-Gene Stealer Cult. So you can't come within 12 inches of me. And in the first or second battle round, when you try and bring somebody down... Boom, four plus, you're not even coming down. So, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, this is great. This is 30 points. Uh, it's a 30-point little enhancement, but, like, put this on a... Uh, you want to kind of put this on a, a, a bigger model as you can. Stick it in the middle of the battlefield. Put this on the Norn Emissary, for instance. Norn Emissary, which is going to be sitting on central objectives. Uh, OC a billion, uh, sat there with a feel no pain and just, like, controlling that center of the battlefield. I mean, this is brilliant, brilliant, really, really cool. Synaptic control is the next one. Uh, again, it's a synaptic model only. Each time an attack is allocated to the bearer, subtract one from the damage characteristic of the attack. That's cool. Um, that's cool. We do like uh, minus one damage. Uh, <clears throat> Death guard. Uh, <laughs> Dirge heart of the, of the Kairos is the next one, which is an aura. 
a sign-ups model only while an enemy unit is within nine you minus one leadership or plus one leadership worsen the leadership so it does actually say it properly worsen the unit's leadership by one so uh, leadership of six plus is going to seven plus all uh, right let's have a look at some of the enhancements uh, the enhancements on this one are all one command point smothering shadow is the first one uh, this is in any phase uh, just after an enemy unit fails a battle shock test so one synapse unit from your army was within 12 inches of that unit you roll six dice and for each three plus you take a mortal wound so when you're popping that shadow in the warp and forcing people to take battle shock tests or at any other point when you're when you can force them to take a battle shock test uh, if you're within 12 inches of a synapse unit three plus take a mortal wound it's quite cool uh, the next one is synaptic channeling it's in your command phase and you pick one synapse unit from your army till the end of the phase while a friendly tyranid unit is within nine inches that unit is within synapse range of your army so rather than it being six inches for synapse range you're then kind of bumping it up to be within, within nine inches uh, of that one particular synapse model so again non-emissary in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the battlefield on that uh, on that objective just suddenly you've got a an 18 inch bubble of synapse around that which is quite cool uh, the i keep saying the northern emissary of course because it's on a massive base irresistible will is the next one you take this in your shooting phase or your fight phase and you pick one synapse unit from the army sorry that hasn't been uh, selected to shoot or fight and one enemy unit within 24 inches and visible it's got to be visible until the end of the phase, each time a friendly model makes an attack against that unit, um, if it's within six inches of that synapse unit, you can re-roll uh, hit rolls of one and you can re-roll wound rolls of one. That's brilliant. Again, non-emissary. <laughs> non-emissary, again, because it's the biggest uh, biggest base, so you end up uh, with like uh, a nice big 12-inch, well, uh, effectively, effectively 15-inch? No, even bigger than that. Um, yeah, eighteen-inch bubble um, because the the base is it's a it's a it's a uh, hundred mil base, so it's it's a, it's like a four-inch base, so you're effectively getting like a uh, an, an eighteen-inch uh, big bubble of reroll ones to hit, which is quite cool. Reinforced hive node is the next one, so you do this in your opponent's shooting phase, and you pick one synapse unit from your army that was selected as the target of one or more of the attacking unit's attacks till the end of the phase. Um, it's minus one AP, so you get um, uh, armor of contempt on here for one command point. Uh, imperative dominance, however, is in your command phase. This is also one command point. You pick a tyranid uh, army, uh, a tyranid unit from your army, not a tyranid army. Pick up the whole tyranid army, and you select one synaptive imperative, even if you've already selected that selected that imperative this battle. Until the start of your next command phase, that imperative is active for your unit instead of any other synaptive imperative that is active for your army. So if you've already picked one, then you can put it back on this unit. Kind of like the doctrines as well, bouncing the doctrines around. Uh, so override instincts is the last one here. That you pick this one in your movement phase. Uh, you pick one tyranid mod, uh, one tyranid unit in your army. It's in synapse range and it's already made a fallback. And uh, if you pick it for one command point, it can then shoot and charge. So fallback shoot and charge for one command point. That's quite cool. And again, it's not locked to anything. It's just a tyranid unit. So you can do that for, um, well, you can do that for anything you like. That's quite cool. So that's the end of all the detachments. And uh, we'll just have a very, very quick look at some of the data cards uh, uh, for the new models. Okay, let's have a quick look at some of the data sheets in here as well. We have had some of these already kind of previewed on the Warhammer community page, but the first one, and I'm dead excited to have a look at this one. Keep an eye out as well. I've got the kit review for this where I convert this model up as well a little bit to fit in with my Lictor theme, no spoilers, uh, but the Norn Emissary. Norn Emissary looking absolutely amazing, stunning, stunning model proper proper chunky and it's got a hell of a set of rules as well so it's movement 10 so it's not exactly slow it's only toughness 11 but it does have 16 wounds with a four up invun and it's got a two up save as well so throw that in cover um and it's uh, it's it's pretty much always going to get a pretty reasonable save it's uh <laughs> 
It also has a 4 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds, so you're not going to be able to mortal wound chip it down just to kind of uh, get it uh, get it a little bit lower before you uh, shoot at it. However, it does have a special ability called Singular Purpose. And at the start of the first battle round, you select one of the following. So you can either pick an enemy unit, in which case you re-roll hits and re-roll wounds against it, so like pick Mortarian or whatever. Like If you can pick out a very critical enemy unit and then this Norn Emissary can just go and uh, go character hunting or tank hunting or whatever, flip a land raider, re-rolls hit and re-roll wounding against it, or you can pick an objective marker and if you pick an objective marker until the end of the battle if you're within range of that objective, not controlling it, just within range. If you're within range you get a feel no pain 5 plus and you get an objective control of 15. So it's already got objective control 5, so it's going to be standing on an objective. So if you pick the center objective, or more possibly more likely one out to the side so that you can shift the battlefield uh, back over to kind of like hammer and anvil. Um, so pick one of those uh, other objectives. However, the center objective would work as well. Um, use that to your discretion which one you pick. And then it's just going to be standing on that, standing on that objective with a feel no plane 5 plus, 4 up in run, 2 plus save, objective control 15, and then if you can give it one of those enhancements that we've been kind of throwing uh, ideas about, it's going to have a massive aura, aura of benefiting your army as well, right in the middle of the battlefield. I think this is brilliant. Now, in terms of its output, it's got three different types of psychic powers, so it's going to be sitting there doing mind bullets as well. So you can either have um, you can either have a psychic tendril, a neuroparasite, where it's very, very accurately throwing out. This has got precision, so you can target some enemy characters. It's got uh, an 18-inch range. It's only got two shots, but it's hitting on twos. It's strength eight, so it's going to be wounding most characters on twos, minus two, and D3 damage. So any of those um, farseers or anything have got to really, really stay out of sight. Um, 18 inch range on something that's movement 10 and picking out farseers and things would be really really cool uh, hitting on a 2s, winning on a 2s, d3 damage boom and then the next one is a neuro blast so this has uh, got the blast keyword psychic attack again, it's got 2d6 shots again adding the blast in uh, hitting on a 2s uh, it's strength 6, minus 2 armor penetration and damage 1 so great for picking off um, as you would as, as you would imagine picking off hordes um, and uh, yeah that's cool and then the final one is a neuro lance which is <laughs> this is the one that you're going to be picking off some tanks so this has got melter 2 on it as well it's 18 inch range again it's again it's only got two shots but it's ballistic skill 2 plus strength 12 minus 3 a uh, armor penetration and a damage of d6 and of course, if you are within nine inches, it's going to be D6 plus two because it's melter two. And then in melee, uh, it's got 10 attacks. So those 10 attacks are split between six attacks from monstrous scything talons, hitting on twos at nine minus two damage three. And then it's got extra attacks. So you are getting these. These are monstrous rending claws, four attacks, hitting on twos, damage uh, strength seven, minus two armor penetration and damage of two. Um, and then if it's uh, got five wounds remaining, you, you, you're subtracting one from the hit roll. That's really, really cool. It's got Deadly Demise D6, it's got Shadow in the Warp and Synapse, and then obviously that singular purpose as well. Very, very funky. It is a Psyker, so you can throw it into the Synaptic Detachment if you wanted to, and it is uh, not, however, a character. Let's have a look at its little friend, the Norn Assimilator. So the Norn Assimilator is movement 10. Uh, it's also toughness 11. It's also got 16 wounds. It's got a 2-up save. This one doesn't have an invun. Um, it's leadership 7 plus and it's got OC of 5. Now, interestingly, this is more expensive than the emissary. The emissary is 285 points. This is 305. Okay, let's find out why. Um, again, it has a singular purpose again. So at the beginning of the battle round, you can select an enemy unit, you can reroll hits and wounds, or you can select an objective marker, and it has a 5 plus feel no pain and an objective characteristic of 15. Okay. Once per turn, when an enemy unit is within engagement range and is selected to fall back, on a 2 plus, 
you suffer d6 mortal wounds. So if you're falling back from the Norn Assimilator on a 2+, plus, you're going to take d6 mortal wounds as well. It's got um, some harpoons for its ranged weapons. They've only got 12-inch range, and they are only uh, two attacks. However, they are ballistic skill 2, strength of 12, minus 3 armor penetration, then d6 plus 1. However, after the bearer has shot this weapon, select one monster or vehicle unit hit, and until the end of the turn, each time the bearer, bearer selects that unit as a target of a charge, you can add two to the charge. So if you really, really, really want to kill a tank, you can get within 12 inches of it, shoot it, and then you can add two to that charge roll. So you're effectively like pulling it closer, or you're pulling yourself closer with the harpoon attacks. However, what's it going to do when it gets there? Well, it also has 10 attacks split between uh, some monstrous scything talons and a toxin harpoon, which are the extra attacks. The monstrous scything talons are exactly the same as the last one, so 6 attacks, a weapon skill 2, strength 9, AP minus 2, and damage of 3. But the toxic, the toxin injector harpoon has 4 attacks hitting on 2s, strength 12, Minus three, D6 plus one. So it does hit a little bit harder. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to double check because this does feel like that should be the cheaper version. Let me just double check because I'm sure last time I went and checked, the assimilator was the more expensive one. Where is it? There we go. So the Norn, the Norn emissary, the Norn emissary is two hundred eighty-five. The Norn assimilator is three hundred and five. So the Norn assimilator is the more expensive one. So I was right. Um, I don't know. I think I, I think I'd still take the emissary every single time. Um, that's not because it's the cooler looking modelers either. I think it's got the better rules as well. Um, they, they both have the silly objective control. However, the uh, the assimilator doesn't have the invun. Yeah, I just like the emissary. I think the emissary gives you a little bit more variety and um, flexibility as well with its uh, psychic attacks. And with the psychic keyword as well, uh, it's going to be able to tie in with a few more, a few more options as well. Yeah, anyway, let me know what you think. Which one would you take? Would you take the emissary or would you take the assimilator? And if you do take the assimilator, how many are you taking? Because these are not characters and they're not epic heroes or anything like that. You can take three non emissaries and you can take three non assimilators. And I have a friend of mine who that kind of army list is right up his street and I want to see him do it. <laughs> you know who you are. This is your call out. Right, uh, let's have a look at uh, one of the other ones. So the other one I want to just quickly mention is the Biovore. Now the Biovore rule has changed. Uh, where's the Biovore? Let's do a quick search. It's the easiest way to find it. So the Biovore has... Uh, the, the Biovore up until now has been the unit that you take in the Tyranid army and it throws out the spore mines and the spore mines can score you objectives and everything. Now the Biovore I think has gone down. The Biovore is now 45 points each. Forgive me if I'm wrong but I think they are currently 60 so they have gone down in points. Um, however they are they are movement 5, they're toughness 6, they've got a 3 up save, they've got 5 wounds, they've only got a leadership of 8 plus. They've only got a leadership of 8 plus and they've got objective control 1 and uh, their spore mine launcher has blast devastating wounds it's got heavy and it has indirect fire it's got 40 18 range d3 shots hitting on a four strength six minus one damage two however nobody used that stat line um, everybody used it to seed spore mines now this is where the change has happened once per turn in your shooting phase when selected to shoot one unit with this ability can use it to instead of making attacks uh, if it does so you can add one spore mine unit to your army and set it up anywhere with on the battlefield it is wholly within nine inches uh, sorry wholly within 48 inches and more than nine inches horizontally away from any enemy units uh, the spore mine unit contains one model for each model in this unit so there we go um 
you can however um once per hang on you can have a unit of one to three and one unit okay so if you want to do this if you want to do this with um three if you want to sorry if you want to create three spore mines you're going to have to have a unit of three so they're going to have to be within coherency so you're not going to be able to put one on one side of the battlefield one on the other side etc 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 they're going to have to be in a unit because once per turn one unit can use this ability instead of making any attacks uh, and if it does you can add one spore mine unit to your army so you're adding a spore mine unit they are not going to be able to be scattered around um so yeah they've just been a little bit more particular about how this is going to work you'll no longer be able to have three biovores which are split up and they're firing three different spore mines in three different locations you can do it once and if it's a unit of three biovores you're going to be able to create three spore mines but again they're going to have unit coherency as well so probably only going to have one biovore uh, in your armies anymore now the pyovore uh, has the burning spray ability so in your shooting phase after this unit has shot select one enemy unit hit by one or more of those attacks until the end of the phase you don't get cover so that's quite funky however the pyrovore only has a 12 inch range so it's going to be uh, charging up the battlefield a little bit if you want to do that uh, in melee it's only got two attacks uh, hitting on uh, four strength five no armor penetration and one damage from its chitin barb limb uh, so slightly different models now with uh, with the new models so that's the last that's the last of the new models that i wanted to talk about death leaper is of course uh well actually death leaper is identical he's not changed at all which i'm a little bit disappointed about the model is gorgeous and i wanted him, him just to be a little bit better have a few more attacks and just be a little bit more dangerous he's still only got six attacks hits on twos with a strength of seven minus two and damage two just thought he'd be a little bit more angry and dangerous to um uh, he, he does have precision with his attacks but i just thought he'd be a little bit more scary to some of the uh, the characters in the 41st millennium but uh, there we go thank you very much for watching it um please feel free to drop into my twitch channel anytime you like it's twitch.tv forward slash chris frossin and you can find me and tell me how amazing this video was uh, on twitter instagram anything like that you can find that at, at chris frossin as well uh, please leave a comment down below on what your favorite detachment is and what model you would like to, to add to that detachment what's kind of be going to be your pinnacle uh, mvp model if you like uh, and please share this out with your friends and uh, i will see you on the next video thank you very much everybody take care and i'll see you later Bye bye